As someone who's driven for DoorDash both part-time and full-time in different marketplaces and all of the other food delivery apps and other side hustles and apps and platforms starting back in 2015, we saw some recent changes in 2022. So I want to go over with you in this video the best practices for 2023 using the most updated info and updates to the Dasher app so you can make the most money. Now, if you would just like the fast track, really the a to Z course on mastering these food delivery platforms. Enroll in our mastering delivery course is linked down below if you just want to learn the best practices so you can start maximizing your income now. Firstly, going over just some updates that we saw first in the summer of 2022. I want you to check your Dasher app if you have this because a lot of these programs that were initially going to end around Q4 of 2022 have been extended. So again, I want to show you which ones are actually worth it. So firstly, this time earnings mode and if you didn't know, you have two ways to earn as a Dasher. You have this time earnings mode, and then you have an earn by order mode. So you'll see your pay quote, you'll see the miles and everything on that order request. But this time earnings mode gives you a guaranteed amount per hour. Now, the only stipulation here is you can only decline or ignore one order per hour. So because of that, think about it. You have to accept almost everything when you're out there dashing. So my question to you would be, are 90 plus percent of orders even worth it in your market? Now, the next update we saw was called accept more, earn more. Now, the Dasher support page actually reroutes to earn more with higher ratings mode, I guess. So they kind of changed the verbiage there, but it's all the same. So this earn more with higher ratings mode thing, it gives you two different tiers, a 50 percent acceptance rate and a 70 percent acceptance rate if you hit these thresholds you'll get access to higher paying orders so i need to ask you the same question here are 50 percent of orders worth it in your marketplace or are 70 percent of orders worth it just to get access to a higher priority orders and that's we would think two plus dollars a mile but do you have to accept like 90 cents or a dollar per mile orders just to get there? Now, one feature that's been around for a while, and I don't see this being discontinued, is Top Dasher. Now, with a lot of these programs, there's different criteria, either acceptance rate, Dasher rating, and more to qualify for this. But for Top Dasher, with a 70% acceptance rate, 95% completion rates, a 4.7 Dasher rating, you'll get access to dashing at any time. So traditionally, you can only go online in red zones on your home screen. Take a look, actually. Go to your home screen and you'll see your large marketplace broken into different segments. And some are grayed out and some are red, darker red. You can go online in those zones. Now, with Top Dasher, you can go online in those gray zones. Now, keep in mind, a zone is gray typically because the need has been filled for dashers or it's just not busy enough. But keep in mind, if they do have a lot of dashers, it might be because there's a lot of bonus pay, scheduled bonus pay called peak pay. So if that's in a zone that you do want to drive in and there's scheduled peak pay, then it might make sense for Top Dasher. But you're going to have to use your own market knowledge there if that's worth it to get Top Dasher to go online in those gray zones really just for peak pay. I don't want you to go online in gray zones if there isn't any peak pay because, again, that's the other side of the equation. Typically, that's going to mean it's just not busy enough. Okay, so speaking of pay, I'm mentioning this peak pay, right? That's the promotion. So let's talk about that. That peak pay, that is your per delivery bonus. So in that home screen, if you click at the top, there's a promotions tab. I need you to understand how often do you get peak pay and how much is the average peak pay? So look here. Here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I'm coming to you from, we average $1 to $3 peak pay. Now, it's not just the overall average. Yours might be higher. It might be $2 to $5 on average. I need you to look at the days and times as well. Because let's say a super early shift, if it has peak pay, a dollar or $2, it might not be worth it. If it's 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., you need to understand, well, I mean, obviously, am I available during those times, but who's ordering? And I mean, what restaurants are even open if it is 3 a.m. to 5 a.m.? And listen to this. This is very important. If you're a seasoned dasher or if you're a new dasher, the number one thing, in my opinion, comment down below if you agree, but 
the number one thing that's going to make you the kind of money that I aim for you here on the channel, $25 an hour, that is this peak pay. Now look here, the time of day and the bonus pay really makes a difference. So here's our market segments. Yes, they're red, which means I can go online. It might even say it's busy, but there's no peak pay. So if I reserved my free time just to drive a little bit later in the day, look at this peak pay. Almost the entire marketplace has peak pay. Now, another thing that you're allowed to do that relates to promotional pay is if you have a friend or a spouse, whatever, someone that you're doing this with, you can refer each other using the referral policy. So look here, if I would refer, now it has to be friends or acquaintances. You can't post this on large blogs and websites, what have you, but you can send this to each other. And this example is nine hundred dollars for the referrer as long as the dasher completes x amount of deliveries in a certain amount of days shown here so again friend partner spouse that's a great way to get some extra money obviously it's a one-time bonus okay next driving strategies and here's some new verbiage so pay attention to this so when you're driving your dasher app's going to show you hot spots but did you know there's actually two different types of hot spots on this app so here it's the dynamic hot spots and it reads quote you do not have have to be within the red area to receive an order, but the closer you get, the more likely you are to get an order. I think that verbiage is really interesting. So what it's showing here is that dynamically, this is refreshing every 10 minutes, by the way, it's going to show you a hot spot, And then these red zones are encompassing all the restaurants in this given busy area. Now, again, it says you don't have to be in the red zone, but it also says the closer you get, the more likely you are to get an order food for thought. So our second type of hot zone, and this is good for that market expertise, just learning, I feel, are historical hotspots. So here, quote, historical hotspots are shown as a flame icon without the red area around them and say, previously busy hotspot zone at the bottom of the screen. You will see historical hotspots when it isn't busy enough to create a dynamic hotspot. These hotspots are based on recent data and guide you to restaurants that are usually busy at that time. Now, what we teach you here is to discover, learn, and stage, aka wait. You want to park, sit, and wait, by the way. You don't want to drive around for orders, but we want to park, sit, and wait at power strips. Those are areas that are really dense with restaurants, kind of akin to these hotspots here. Now, these historical hotspots, I would use that data. And actually, one thing that's really interesting here is it says it's recent recent data as far as these historical hotspots. I would use that and then your actual real world knowledge of your marketplace of those power strips to really find the best places to drive. And then again, combined with what? The promotional pay and your trend analysis of the best days and time to drive. Okay, so now let's look at an actual order request and I wanna go through what I would think of when I get an order. So look at this order request, Noodles and Company. So we have the restaurant name, to the right, we have a timer. You have about 35 seconds to make a decision here. Four items, that's just good to know if you're carrying a lot of stuff. Hot and cold bags, sometimes there's drinks, just some decent info there. We have the distance, 3.3 miles for the delivery. And of course, our payouts here at $9.75. Now it does say, includes DoorDash pay and customer tip. Total may be higher. So I would say maybe five to 10% of orders will be higher. And that is because of a really large customer tip. So this payout here of 975, it might actually be 15, 18, maybe even $19 and 75 cents. Again, it doesn't happen too often, but what I'd really look at are the basics of what's proven to work. And that's the dollars to mile ratio, what we teach you here. It's how much am I getting paid for the miles driven and also a little bit secondary, just depends on the scenario, but the dollars to time ratio, how much am I getting paid and how much time is it going to take? So look here, it says what the time's 4.03 PM on your phone in the top left here and delivered by 4.28 PM. So you get a judge of, okay, how long is it going to take to drive to the restaurant? Hopefully I'm not waiting long. That's something else. I'm going to give you a strategy on that here in a second. So hang with me. And then the time to make that delivery, of course. Now you're allowed to decline on any of these gigs as an independent contractor. In this case, on that top right, you see that decline button there. 
I can click that or you can ignore it. it does the same thing. You let the timer run out. Same thing. It's going to affect your acceptance rate as a dasher. Don't worry about that. You can't be deactivated for a low acceptance rate. So really take as much time as you need. Look at that dollars to mile ratio. Look at that restaurant. You'll learn over time. Are they on the ball? Do I typically have to wait? Is parking tough there? How do I feel about that pickup spot? But secondly, look at that ending destination with that house icon. So then I'll know that ending destination. Is it going to leave me in another power strip? We want you to ping pong orders. So that ending destination, it should already be a perfect place to park, sit and wait. Because I don't want you to have to drive three to five to eight plus minutes to another power strip. Again, the ending destination ideally should be another power strip. We want to ping pong and have minimal community miles at all. Now, specifically for 2023, let me tell you something that I think you're going to see more of this year, and that's non-restaurant deliveries. So number one, we have Dashmart deliveries. So it's convenience items and the like in your marketplace. I feel like you're going to get more Dashmart requests in 2023 but don't worry about it. It is not to shop and deliver. So shop and deliver is different. A Dash Mart, we're simply gonna go there. It's gonna be pulled and packed for you. You just gotta pick it up and make the delivery. So don't worry about how many items you're gonna get on a Dash Mart request. Again, fundamentals, dollars to mile ratio. Now, like I said, that shop and deliver order is quite different than restaurants and these Dash Mart requests. So as the name infers, yes, you're going to go into that store, you know, convenience store, what have you, you're going to have the list, you're going to shop, you're going to have to communicate any out of stock items and alternatives. You're going to check out using your Dasher red card, which is prepaid, pre-authorized. But I've had errors on the red card as well. Then you'll have to step aside, contact support and all of that. So just some food for thought there if you see a shop and delivery request. Now drop a like on this video if you're getting value so far, because this next thing, I don't know if you knew this, but on any of these side hustle apps, this is probably the most powerful thing that you have as a worker does again doesn't matter if it's doordash or any of these apps that is the choice that you have when working on these apps and platforms so number one the declines or ignoring a request that doesn't make sense that's number one and actually i would decline it versus ignoring it just so if it is busy, and hopefully you're driving when it's busy, that you don't have to wait for that entire counter, right? You can just click decline. So that's number one, declining and not being deactivated for low acceptance rates. And secondly, a little more strategic, those are cancellations. So if you do accept something and you do want to cancel, you're allowed to cancel within a certain window. And honestly, the DoorDash cancellation rate, it's pretty lenient. You just have to have an 80% completion rate, which means you just complete 80% of the orders that you accept. So you have the choice to cancel. When would you cancel? So when I'm doing these apps, the times you would cancel, obviously an emergency, a you know fender bender, flat tire, other kind of personal emergency, you can cancel that order that you're on. Now, kind of the logistical real world problem, you're, I guarantee you're gonna run into this, comment below if you have this happen, are long wait times at the restaurant. I would wait, five minutes is like completely doable. Okay, five minutes, I don't wanna wait, but five minutes is fine. Five to eight minutes, it gets kind of a pain. Eight to 12 minutes, that's a gray zone for you. And actually, late 2022, DoorDash gave you, as a dasher, even more options of when you can cancel and actually without penalty. So if you have a customer who is abusive on the text app, they're really complaining, they're berating you via the text app, you can report that customer now. And you can unassign that delivery without penalty, and you can also block that that customer, which I think is a fantastic feature. I think all of these apps should have that so you never have to deliver to them again. I feel like, well, we're already seeing this, but you're going to see more grocery deliveries as well. So how does that work? So a merchant has two options when sourcing the picking, pulling, and the delivery process for their business. They have merchant pick, or Dasher Shop. So this directly from the DoorDash for Merchants website. So look here for Merchant Pick. If your workflow is to pack and prep DoorDash orders using your own staff, again, referring to merchants here, what we call Merchants Pick, 
You'll have the opportunity to review and accept the order through your Dash or tablet, then confirm a pickup and delivery time. If the item's out of stock, you'll be able to contact the customer and suggest an alternative, much like you're going to do on Dash or Shop. Then you'll pack the bags and you'll have them ready for pickup by a customer or Dasher. So you as a Dasher, if the business is selecting Merchant Pick, they're gonna pull and pack it themselves. And then all you gotta do is go there, you pick it up just like a food delivery order. But that's not always the case. And remember, we talked about the shop and deliver, where you're gonna go in and shop. And I have a feeling we're gonna see more and more of these grocery runs, because remember, I told you the shop and deliver, it's convenience stores, Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS. Well, are the grocery runs gonna be linked in with the shop and deliver, or is it gonna be classified as something differently entirely? Comment down below what you're seeing on your grocery runs. Well, look here, here's the grocery run workflow for the Dasher shop. If your workflow is to let Dashers pick the items, what we call Dasher Shop, a Dasher will arrive at your store and shop according to the list. And then same thing here. If the item's out of stock, they'll contact the customer, suggest an alternative. Then they, aka you, the Dasher, you'll get in line in just like any other customer, except they'll be paying with a provided DoorDash credit card, that's your red card, to help manage the transaction smoothly. So there's the two options. The merchant, the business, is gonna pull the groceries, and then you just go there and pick it up. And I remember years ago, I had a few of those, and it's really the ideal, because you don't have to go in there and pick it, versus, yes, I've had the other thing happen where I have to go in a store, think shipped and Instacart, where you have to do this, you gotta go in there, shop, pick the items and bag the items and then deliver. So it adds a huge, like what? Two, three steps to your workflow. So to summarize that, for grocery runs, it's not just gonna be the dollars to mile ratio. Pay attention to this. Drop a like on this video if you appreciate this so far. For grocery runs, it is really gonna be heavy on the dollars to time ratio. Because yes, it's gonna pay $15 for three miles. That looks great on paper by the numbers. But if it's what, a shop for 45 items, how much time is gonna take you in that grocery store? And can you imagine it's busy, right? You're shopping for 45 items and you get to the cash register and you just wanna get there as fast as possible and then there's three open and there's lines, etc. So do let me know down below in the comments which tip here helped you out the most. And do check out that mastering delivery course if you like, link down below, as well as our Amazon storefront for the best accessories. If you got value, drop a like on this video. You can also click or tap the screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.